who creates anything knows it's impossible. Impossible to completely express oneself. And that's with a poet, with an artist, a philosopher, or again, any form of creation. Everything will fall short of perfection. Everything will be impossible before beginning. And with that fact, we also realize that we must create something. We must say something. We must do something. Knowing very well it won't be perfect, as it might be in our mind or in our spirit. And the transferring of this spirit information into physical, or this idea, which is timeless, and bringing it into the present is the greatest challenge. And nothing goes as planned. This morning, while walking my dog, drinking my first half cup of coffee, we met another dog, a cute pup, and it's been a big fiasco all morning. All my plans delayed and forgotten. And at a certain point, you must stop resisting. And up until now, I've resisted and been upset, and now I've reached acceptance. Whatever. I can't catch the dog, it won't let me, and I guess if it wants to hang out forever, it can. I hope you're all well, and welcome. And here I'm sitting watching a YouTube video by this E-War channel, and I think it's been kicked off this platform already, but is available in all sorts of re-uploads. Not only here, but on various platforms. And I think he's really nailed it, compiling work from all different creators and putting a lot of puzzle pieces together. And he brings up something that I shared in a past video pertaining to the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer. Something I'd seen on another channel that I shared called Flat Fact. And if you don't remember, the point of that video was talking about the precession of the equinox. And here we could see the Cancer opposing Capricorn and these representing an age, and how these should change every 2,000 plus years. It should shift one degree, and so should these lines, these tropic lines that we see on the maps. They should not continuously be the Tropic of Capricorn and Cancer. These represent a stagnation in the timeline, and right now we are in the age of Pisces, and these maps should say Tropic of Pisces and Tropic of Virgo. But we don't see that. We're stuck in the Cancer and Capricorn. And what does that say? It says that we have old maps. Maps that could only offer proper guidance and navigation if using the stars thousands of years ago. And every single map that we're seeing, as anomalous as they are, are either refabrications or truly are old maps. And here we're told we're in the year 2021. We know the timeline was reset to zero AD. We know. This is no mystery. We accept that the true timeline has been corrupted. Perhaps we accept it in the name of religion. But that's not true. Because non-religious accept this timeline as well. And texts all over Different cultures in this realm talk about different dates. Long calendar counts in South America, in India, and even the Torah, which did not reset, gives us a year of 5781 today. 5781 being the count from when Moses left Egypt. And here telling us the stories of the Egyptians and their flourishing and vanishing civilization took place as little as 5,000 years ago. 
And is this the true reset cycle? Is this the true meaning of the cross and the importance of keeping track of this cycle? And if the year is 5781 and we subtract our 2021, we have a difference of a little over 3700 years and clearly one reset cycle in there. And that's the most important part to stress. I have often been enraged of the daylight savings time, upset with the tampering of one hour of my life. And again, information is highly controlled. And I'm sure many have come out for the last 20 or 30 years, especially with the understanding of astrology. But really, until you understand the true nature of this realm, astrology can be as misguiding as NASA. But yet, I think it's an absolutely important science. And until all of us understand this science and understand the relevance of this cross and how it's absolutely a map of what's going on in this realm. And so are all of these old world clocks that have been removed and replaced with our false clocks. These are not just some foolish mechanisms of timekeeping from some primitive people. This is the truth in plain sight. And so is this. And so we have no maps. All the older maps depict more land masses that as time progresses disappear. Friesland, down here, and what we would call our entire northern land masses up here, also gone. Of course Greenland, charted with rivers and ice free. And this would make sense if this map was from several ages ago. And if that's the case, Tartaria and all the nations depicted on these maps actually existed several ages ago, or many resets back. And what do we do if we have nothing to go off of? Has anybody given us a depiction of our realm? And I say yes, and I featured his channel before, and we'll have a look at it now. And that channel is Vibes of Cosmos, formerly Sturgio Studios. And what he has done is given us this map. How he's done this is by charting out the reflection of our realm that is to be seen on the moon. And the moon being plasma and not anything solid, certainly not a rock. And lo and behold, with absolute accuracy, he's charted out the realm. And not only our realm and the hidden land masses within it, but everything beyond it. Which I showed in a past video. Here he calls this Terra Vista. And within our realm is Atlantis. And perhaps some of the most in-depth research on this specific subject that I've seen. Charting out flight plans and distances. And I think he's made an absolutely compelling case by now. And even this guy told us this a few years before the supposed landing on the moon. This man told us there would be no landing as the moon was merely plasma. So all this may be a little heavy and it's probably a good time to say, I don't know. But this appears to be what we're dealing with. Now this hull seems to be access out of this terrarium that we're in. And we all know the northern lights emanating their wonder and mystery from this point. Most people satisfied with the explanation they're given. But it seems this is much closer to the system in which we dwell. Even in times of old, we are shown this system. And there's a great channel called FPV Angel that I've featured before. Also doing excellent work depicting our realm and the work of Walter Russell. 
and his motor that has been designed after our realm. A free energy system. And in this model, we're getting an explanation on what is creating the moon, or the plasma, or the reflection. And we must consider that we have a core, but not like they would tell us, but rather a core that is connected to the luminaries above. And this core emanating a type of radiation or x-ray or some type of wave that is not visible to the naked eye, but that can have an effect when bounced off of certain materials, such as the dome. And if the dome was made out of a crystalline structure, then it would have the ability to reflect these waves that are usually not able to be seen by the naked eye. And there was a scientist who proved this, this guy, that if a beam of invisible energy was directed at a crystalline structure, it could actually bounce off. And we are utilizing this technology today. And in fact, we see this depicted here in science and on the famous Pink Floyd album titled The Dark Side of the Moon. Ding, ding. Telling us the truth in the way that they do. Typically through some sort of epic distraction. And I'm going to end with some thoughts. What is the end result of all of this research? Do you have enough yet to do what you're going to do? And that's the most important thing to ask yourself. I knew enough 20 years ago to do what I was going to do. I knew everything was a lie. And some people want every detail of this research. And for what? To go on living the way you're living? How long will you run this program? Working the jobs you despise? Living in cities? Paying astronomical costs of living? When it doesn't have to be that way. And just a glance at the research that we do here in the old world, we can see that it wasn't always this way. We're living in a garbage reality. Fed garbage, thinking garbage, and acting like garbage. And sure, there's the occasional beautiful moment, the true things, love and community, sharing and caring. But everything else is a waste of time and energy. Yes, I think we found possible ways out of this place, but where to? We don't know what's out there. And the only thing that is certain that we can change is our lives as individuals, as families, and the way that we think. And this will be the true peaceful revolution. And I don't care if you buy my book, but I feel I laid it all out back in 2013. It's not written well. I didn't have an editor. But for me, it was the greatest solution I could offer to escaping the rat race and living a life of freedom. I was also planning on a reset. Always aware of it. 10,000 examples of it having come and gone. And I think we as a community have the ability to weather a reset with the knowledge that we have if we would come together. And I hope one day to make this a reality. But for now, many of us are where we are. And I would take the most simplest prescriptions in this book and get right with your food and water. Most of you have shelter. And if there would be a reset, paying rent or mortgage really wouldn't matter. You would get to keep your home. But you would have wished that you had procured adequate supplies of food and water and not just storing it but the ability to create it to filter it being the case with water or distill it and with food having at least the knowledge of edible plants in the wild and certainly having a provision of seeds on stock and no doubt having chickens and even a rooster to continue the cycle and caring for these things 
the way Noah cared for the animals in the ark, ensuring their safety and health. And I'll continue to do this research, and I think many of you will too. But I just want to stress the importance of independence in your life. Because if you don't have this independence, then you will likely fall and crumble along with this artificial system we're living in. And the system is going down quick. And if you live in a place where you're not able to grow food and be independent, have access to water, then I suggest you do. This is the first sign that you are dependent and vulnerable to the demise and downfall of this great lie that we've been sold. Well, I think that's it. I'm sorry it's so short, but it's been a hell of a week. I wish you all well. Do have a blessed day. Until the next one. And here I've decided to take the jab from this mosquito. If I smash him, all the toxins will ooze into my system. So I hope to let him finish, have a little drink and fly away. I haven't done this for years. I did once. And maybe it's like giving blood to nature. And I feel a little sensation. It reminds me of acupuncture. Ooh, and it burns a little. And I think he's done. I think he's pulling out. And it's said that acupuncture was invented on accident from bee stings. And there he goes. And in theory, it will not leave a big welt now. And we'll just monitor this for a little bit.